and swapped on Monday and swapped on Tuesday and swapped on Wednesday and swapped on Saturday. And it's like, that's why people come here because I do business at the current market, whatever that is. Hearing from the community that they are going to <clears throat> local coin shop dealers all around the country, trying to either sell their precious metals and they're offered way under spot or buy precious metals and it's way over. I was on that side of the counter for a lot longer of my life than on this side of the counter. And I've dealt with the uh, worst a-holes you can possibly mm -hmm. imagine in mm -hmm. the coin business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm just not going to treat people that way. That's, I, I think everybody who comes to the door, I want them to leave a friend. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's how I run my business. Now, I don't think there's anything that I buy right now Except you have um, like these, like Christmas and, and Mother's Day and <laughs> Easter and stuff that are yeah. hard to sell. Sure, I might pay if it's right now it's a twenty-seven and change. I might yeah. pay twenty-six fifty, maybe pay a, a dollar less in spot. But I'm never never going to pay less than that. Yeah, but any mainstream stuff, I'll pay spot. You, like, here's something else that I'm hearing a lot of. Uh, oh, the spot's going to drop or whatever, and and they're like, well, it doesn't matter, Yankee the premium is just going to go up. It's going to make any difference whatsoever when you go to your local coin shop. And I'm like, wait a minute. I got I bought quite a bit from Tim. He doesn't play that game. If it goes down. Okay. I'm going to show you this is not, uh, for, not okay. for publication. Okay. okay. Price of gold was at its high point on mm -hmm, Monday. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Tuesday it dropped 120 bucks. Mm -hmm. And that's what I sold on Tuesday. And you can see it's actually four and a half lot. gold ounces. Four and a half. Three American uh, Eagles, yep. um, one Maple Leaf, and one half Krugerrand, and I lost money on all of them. But that's, you know, that's my personal philosophy is you do business at the current price. That's why we were Thank swapped, you for showing me that. On, swapped on Monday and swapped on Tuesday and swapped on Wednesday and swapped on Saturday. And it's like, that's why people come here because I do business at the current market, whatever that is. And, you know, I just feel that if the price drops, sell it at the regular price yeah. because then I can buy more at the lower price. And you don't, and we've talked about, that's great. We don't, we've talked about this. So you don't hold on to a bunch of stuff saying, oh, shoot, the price has gone down. I'm going to wait. You, no, and you, you want to get it off. There's some very big companies. I don't need to publish who they are. No, so. if, they, if the <laughs> price drops and they don't want to sell at that price, they put out of stock. Or if somebody calls and points out that they're selling things below the spot, they just cancel the order. Or <clears throat> hey, I don't have that kind of business. Good. Because it's you know you got you got to hire people to answer all the phone calls they get. And they mm -hmm. get phone calls all the day long from mm -hmm. all over the country, and you know when somebody calls me and they want to buy. 10 gold eagles and I don't have any, mm -hmm. I will tell them, I don't have any in stock. I can get anything you want, but it will cost probably $20 a coin more than my usual price. Yeah, Because sure. I get them from a wholesaler. Exactly. So but if people come in here and, and sell you this, you're not going to gouge them. I'm not going to gouge them. But, um, That's the key. I usually try to figure out what I can sell them for. Sure, absolutely. Well, you're in it. So this far, isn't a. This is. And so far, this these is, beautiful coins. They really are. Uh, I mean, I have to admit. They're very nice. They're really nice. They're a nice proof strike. Oh my um, but this is totally not me, unless I really wanted to treat myself. But that is really cool. Quarter, unless the price of silver go, goes up dramatically, I'm probably going to take a beating on them. So. Man, those are cool. They are very nice, and uh, it's you know. Right there is one full pound of silver. <laughs> I know. So, 453.6 grams. I just bought this, guys, because... You like the color? I don't, but somebody's going to like it. Look at that. Anyway, so what, what, what do you think of the um, coin shortage going on? Is that just a supply chain issue? Is that just because velocity dropped during the you know shut down and 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 well, we've you know they, what is what, well, what's the, the banks thing? the banks are the ones who caused the, the problem they haven't been ordering from the fed and you know the armored cars that's mostly what they carry they carry right. coins every bank so every bank you know they say well let's see we have you know 15 regular customers every month come in and they buy you know so many quarters so many dimes so many halves so mm. many pennies blah 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 
man, nobody's coming in. Why is nobody coming in? Well, uh, banks are requiring people to go through the drive-thru. And if you go through the drive-thru and say, uh, I've got these rolls of coins I want to get. Oh, we can't, sorry, we can't do that through the drive-thru. And I said, oh, well, I, I got this company and we usually order this, 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 and this. Well, you have to make an appointment. It's that bad. This is all over the country. Why is there a, a surprise that mm -hmm. there's a shortage of coins? There's a, there's a shortage of commerce. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just like the, <clears throat> you know, the, why is there a shortage of silver? Well, because 75% of the silver doesn't come from silver mines. It comes from nickel, zinc, uh, copper, and lead mines. And they're closed because the economies all around the world are mm. in the dumper. So they got no reason to keep these mines open. You know, there's a, the, the demand for copper went, bing, right? mm -hmm. nobody's building houses or anything else or doing electrical work. True. Yeah. So uh, why are they keeping the mines open? They're not. So the, the ones that are around, working around the clock are the 25% of the silver that comes out of silver mines. Those people are, yeah. they can't work hard enough or fast enough. Right. They can't, <clears throat> they can't always take all those people from the Chinese copper mine and take them to Australia to work in a silver mine mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. So there's a it's real, real shortage, shortage because the Democrats decided to shut down the economy. Okay, if it were up to Trump, he would find some way of getting the schools sanitized so all the kids could go back to school. Mm -hmm. They find some way of getting every gym in America sanitized so they could open up instead of sending them to jail in New Jersey. I mean, this is, right. they, they yeah. find some way of cleaning up the salons and putting mm -hmm. up pla uh, plexiglass and having to make sure that the, the uh, hair mm -hmm. cutter is using a foolproof mask mm -hmm. instead of putting the woman in jail for opening her salon early. I mean, this stuff is going on all over the country. It's a difference in political attitude, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. Republicans know that what keeps the economy growing is the engine. That's everybody going to work, everybody opening their businesses, and nobody's just going home and hiding in mm -hmm. the closet because they don't want to get sick. I mean, it's 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 just it's deplorable. The whole and, thing and, is deplorable. And this is from a guy who actually has a mask under his chin. Yeah, I do. Huh? Are you sick? No, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> I've got all these. I got a box of masks over there. I'm, I'm starting to change them more frequently because mm -hmm. I, I'm so tired of wearing a mask. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you have a Democratic mayor who thinks that uh, protesting, uh, burning and looting and you know, other destruction and shooting at police is fine, even if you don't wear a mask. But having a political rally uh, in support of somebody like, say, Donald Trump, mm. oh, those people you need to be arrested because they're not wearing masks. I mean, come on, it's it going on all over the country. And, you know, this defund the police movement, mm. that's as Marxist as it gets, mm -hmm. okay? How, how do you think the Bolsheviks took over Russia, okay? They said to every military person and every policeman, mm. you're either with us or against us, okay? Well, <laughs> I'm not going to join you guys. Boom! Mm. Okay? What about you? Oh, I'm with you. That's mm -hmm. the way, that's what a Bolshevik, a Bolshevik or a Marxist revolution looks like. Mm. You know, the, you, you take the Hall of Fame of, of Marxists, you got, um, gee, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, uh, Fidel Castro, you can go down to this, Paul Pot, they're all Marxists. Okay, what do they have in common? Oh, yeah, they killed millions of people. Millions of people. Hundreds the million. estimate is over a hundred million yep. people yep. died because of Marxist governments, and you know, and we have Black Lives Matter saying, "Oh, we want to do away with the, the nuclear family. We want to, you know, do away with the government altogether. Uh, we definitely don't want to have any police. We want to have an open borders." Mm -hmm. Oh, these people are geniuses. I, apparently, they don't know anything about history. You know, there has never been a Marxist government in the history of the world that has survived. And, you know, you, you, Marxism, socialism is exactly the same thing. The Romans tried it and it failed. And it goes back that far. You know, every Marxist government, every socialist government in the history of the world has failed. And don't tell me that Norway is socialist because they're not. Don't tell me that Sweden is socialist because they're not. They have good social programs mm -hmm. because they export lots of fossil fuels. That's a known fact. I mean, everybody in, in Europe knows it because 
Norway's the the per capita leader in, in exports of oil mm -hmm. in Europe, more than any other European country. They export oil per capita, mm -hmm. so they can afford to have great social programs. But you know, if you are <clears throat> a terrific hockey player and you're you know for a U.S. college, and you decide you want to go play in Sweden and they're willing to pay you to, you get three years, then you're gone, kicked out of the country, because. You're not paying for those social programs mm. with the meager taxes that you pay, so you mm. don't deserve to get any. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, socialist governments are exactly as uh, Margaret Thatcher said. Sooner or later, you run out of everybody else's money. Yeah, run out. I'm not sure this I is going to be monetized, I but you know what? Understand. This is Tim Unfiltered, guys. You wanted it, here it is. I don't understand <laughs> how the mayor and the governor mm. in Oregon or the mayor and governor in, in uh, Washington mm. can possibly think that that form of socialism is going to survive in their cities. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, I've seen a lot of third world countries. I've you know, been to Mexico. I lived in Mexico for eight months. Um, and I know what it's like in a third world country uh, when there is chaos and there is no police action. Uh, you just walk north, you know, down the road north of Mexico City and you see the biggest bar you can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. It's not their fault. They had no jobs, no money. But you know what Portland, Oregon looks like now? It looks like a third world country, a city at the, at the edge of a, a city in a third world country. Mm. That's what it looks like. Mm. I mean, with the graffiti and the broken walls and the smashed glass, everything boarded up. That's a city somebody wants to live in? Why would you want to live there? Mm. The only people I know who came from Oregon, like I've done business with, mm -hmm. um, they say they'll never go back. They still have family. They'll never go back. Mm. Never go back. And, you know, the businessmen in, in uh, downtown Seattle who are part of the, uh, what do they call it, Chad? Chad. Um, they're never going back. I, I said, one yeah. guy, he said, you know, I'm not the only one who's moving to Texas. You know, this company's moving. That company's moving. We're all going to Texas. Mm. It's better climate and we, we have freedom of thought and uh Free enterprise. This country was founded on free enterprise, and nobody wants to admit it. Uh, is capitalism dead? No, it's well. Capitalism is not really a description of the free market system. That's true. Good point. The free market system was entirely supply and demand. Yep. I mean, you know, it's, if a, you had a farmer who had a, a, wanted to open up a field mm -hmm. to grow crops here in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and you know, first he's got to get all these rocks off this twenty-acre field. You'd have a neighbor who'd show up with his quarter horse and a skid. He'd say, okay, I, I'll do that for uh, four pennies. I'll clear that field of all the rocks. And, you know, so the, the farmer says, how about three pennies and all the hay your horse can eat over the wintertime? Okay, you got a deal. That's the way things work. Mm -hmm. okay? You know, down the road when he says, boy, you know, I'm paying this guy every year to, to clear my field, so maybe I'll get myself a horse. He goes to his neighbor and he says, Hey, you want to sell your horse? He says, no, but I know someone down the street who might sell his horse. And uh, I can make you a skid if you want to do that job on your own. He said, hey, great. You know, you know that field next to my house where the sheep are? You send your horses over there anytime you want to have them graze. Just send them over there. That's the way things used to be. That's the way things used to be. And then if he wanted to build that barn, everybody in the neighborhood would show up to help. Okay? What would he pay them? Uh good uh, stew supper or something like meal. that. Meal. And then when they were building one, he'd be going over there yeah, and building it with them. Right. You know, that was free enterprise. You know, you set the terms mm -hmm. without government interference. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. the, uh, I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons. Federal that government was small. It was in, intentionally small. small. Intentionally it was constitutionally small. small. But, you small. know, was, that was why John Hancock signed his name like this. Because he was one of the He's best businessmen in the history of Boston. Mm. Okay, he was a he was an import export merchant, and every time he'd import something from England, they would tack on more taxes. Why? Because they could get away with it. Okay, every time he go to sell something to people, oh, you know, he, that a portion of that belongs to the king. I mean, that's the way mm. socialism works. Okay, and just because it was a a monarchy doesn't mean it wasn't socialist. But that, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they, the merchants in Boston and everywhere else got tired of that. 
tired of, tired of being told, well, we're, you know, we've got soldiers we have to house, so we're going to take your house. So you, you can go build yourself another house. But that's, that's the way they treated this, the settlers mm -hmm. and, the, and the citizens of, of Boston. And, you know, pretty soon they'd had enough. That's why, they, that's why we had a revolution. Yeah. Like it's free enterprise is yes. what founded this country. It's what built this country. Amen. And for anybody, I don't care what race you are or what, what your religion is, for anybody to say that Marxism is the way, go get some education. Well, they're so blindsided mm. by this silver shortage. I'm just like, you know where it comes from. How could you possibly be blindsided by this? You know, who who blindsided? The U.S. Mint was blindsided, but they, oh, okay. they, they know where the silver comes from. How do they not prepare for the fact that 75% of the silver being mined was just not going to exist? 30% of their total mintage on silver eagles. Yeah, yeah. Now they've got two months to make up the other 70%. It, How are they going to do that? Because they got a tool up for the 21 silver eagles are they in going October. To, are, are they going to be ready for the... I don't think so. I, they may put that off. You you think they may put uh, off the they, the they reverse change? To. Wow, oh, they may have to. Man. But you know it's. Otherwise, they're making twenty twenty collectibles. <laughs> they're not making silver eagles. They're making coins that you won't be able to afford. <laughs> oh, okay. I gotta wrap this up. But we are going to have more fun with Tim live coming up next a week from Thursday. You're gonna go live with me, right? Yeah, I guess so. All right, great. Because that's what. Hundreds of people are saying they got to hear Tim. That was really cool. Thanks so much, Tim. And what did I just buy? I told you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I bought this. But thank you. Man, I really wanted to get that. That would have been cool. But anyways, he's got a lot of silver. He's got American Silver Eagles. He can get you what you need. You definitely have to check out Tim. Thanks. I don't Thanks. trust people who don't wear a mask at either. <laughs> Off comes the mask. Thanks, I think man. we're all healthier if we don't wear the damn things. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. <laughs> I just met Yellow Brick Bullion and his dad. You, you snagged this. He just offered this as a giveaway, guys. Yellow Brick Bullion. That is very, very generous. Thank you so much, man. Oh, you're welcome. Really appreciate it's it. It's great to meet you. It's great to meet you, too. Man. So. I think it was maybe a year ago I was trying to buy that sticker off of Tim, and then I uh, finally <laughs> Wait got one minute. in the mail. Wait a minute. It's still there? Yeah. Oh, my word. How many people have tried to buy that from you, Tim? Almost everybody. No way.